Welcome to Crayola Creativity Week. Today's theme is exploring color, line, and shape. And our special guest creator is Joe Whale, also known as the Doodle Boy. Hi, Joe. Hi. We're so pleased to have you with us today. Please introduce yourself and tell us what creativity means to you personally. Hello guys, my name is Joel, aka the Doodle Boy, and I love doodling. It's uh, one of my very big passions. And what's really important uh, to me in doodling is creativity. And to me, it's just about being free and just doing whatever you want, because I think there's no right and wrong in art. How did you get started doodling? And how did you get your nickname, the Doodle Boy? I started doodling when I was about seven um and over the years like until i was about nine um i just developed a really great like interest in it and at school i wasn't really getting enough art so it was a bit a bit boring really um so my mum and dad uh, sort of saw this and they booked me into a art class um near me like a local one and like on the, like the second week, my uh, teacher there, she asked me to like show her um, my sketchbook, and I did. And she posted like the back page, which was like a big doodle, and she posted that on Instagram. And um, my first ever job, um, which was a wall in a restaurant, so they asked me if I wanted to do it, and of course I said yes. So that's how I got started and my nickname uh, from the Doodle Boys. So it came because like we were thinking about what I should be called and I thought, so I'm a boy and I love to doodle, the Doodle Boy. Please tell us about the book you illustrated and what inspired you. So this is my new book. Um, the book series is called Bad Food, but the first one here is called Game of Scones. So the brief story of it, so there's a, a school and it's not an ordinary ordinary school. And when all of the teachers leave and the children leave and everything's packed up, all of the food and the art supplies and the office supplies, all of them in the whole school come to life. And it's a really hot day and a day is quite a long time for food. So, um, and the air conditioner is broken in the, office, the main office. Um, and the food are having like parties and everything, having loads of fun in the cooler. And they hear a knock on the door and it's the office supplies and they demand sharing the cooler. And like in there, there's a food fight. There's a, quite a lot of suspense. I love the way you recommend we let our imaginations run free. What helps you create things that others might not normally think of, such as dancing gorillas, Backpack kids and cool dogs. So what normally, uh, what I think of is just in my mind and the things I normally like to draw, which I don't, I don't see in reality really. So I think of things that are more fun than reality. So monsters and aliens and then f like food, I imagine it coming to life. So that's sort of what I put into my drawings. And then like animals dancing and everything. It's just not normal and I like putting that into my drawings. When you begin doodling, do you decide what the doodle will be before or after you begin drawing? Um, well, actually, no, not really. Um, but the first character normally, I'd think of what that could be to start off the doodle. But then the rest of that would just be like one character after another. After another. That's sort of what I think about rather than the whole piece coming together. You've doodled on so many surfaces, including walls, sneakers, even a guitar. What was your favorite thing to doodle on and why? Well, I'd probably say walls um, because it's like a big surface and like, like it's not every day that you get to draw on a wall. Like it's just a really a good experience just doing it. Yeah, I, I just love doing walls. How does color bring life to your art? And how do you decide what colors to use in your doodles? Normally, um, how I decide would be sort of 
how I feel. So if I feel like in a normal mood, I do black and white because that's sort of the go-to for a lot of my doodles. But then when I'm like feeling like a lot different and like I like trying new things a lot, so different surfaces, surfaces and stuff, I normally use colour and like, yeah, so I really enjoy doing new things and that sort of makes me want to colour. How does changing the colors in a doodle affect the character's personality or the overall piece? Yeah, so like my favorite characters, so Praying Turtle, like he's really chilled out. So like I think of sort of a light, like color sort of thing. So, and Turtles are green. So I did sort of a green color and it looks really cool. And like, when I think of like being chilled out, I just think of like a light green and a dark green. So when I do my characters, I normally think of ocean and stuff the most. And another example is Cool Dog. Um, so he's really chilled out as well. So I do a more light colour. But if there were like a different emotion, like angry or sad or shocked, I do darker colours. And then the happy ones, like happy and surprised and excited, I do lighter colours. What advice do you have for kids who are looking to experiment with different objects and materials? Some definite advice that I always think of really is don't worry if you make a mistake. And like what I normally do, I change things and I just look at the positive of it and bring all of that into my next, the next character and all of the negatives, I just let them go because it's gone now. And also, I really um, enjoy just black pen and white paper and just straight straight to pen rather than pencil because when I use pencils and rubbers, it makes me want to start all over again and like makes me really picky. So one, some advice for me as well is um, don't really use a rubber, I don't really like them. Please demonstrate how kids could experiment with lines, dots, dashes, and shapes. And show us how color can influence the look and feel of what is drawn. So I'm going to start off uh, with a mark and go straight on to some like yellow paper, which this this sort of makes me think of like happy, happy sort of pattern. So as I said, um, what I'd normally start with would be the shape of the characters or what, what I was going to draw and. If I was doing a lot of them, I do a few shapes, sometimes straight lines for the eyes, like square ones. And then sometimes I'd use circular. But in this piece, I I think of more happy expressions. And then now what I'd finally do, I'd add like and movements and stuff. Like that. And then I just carry carry that on really. And then I like doing different cool cool shapes. Um then like this guy I think I'll do like circular character with sort of triangular eye and then you might be sitting down relaxing then maybe after I do sort of square character and then if I was going to do like a thicker arm I normally do it first because I might have five eyes Might be chasing slice of cake. So they're quite hungry. So I like to vary the different shapes and stuff. And then this guy it's gonna look a bit worried being chased. And then do some icing, sprinkles, some legs and arms as if he were running. 
like you should, if you'd be shouting something I do some lines with like sort of speech to show what you're saying maybe here as well I might do a drink here we run in as well but he might have his hands up and that's like a running doodle that I've just thought of and I think it looks really cool yeah so like sometimes as well I also colour in some of my drawings and sometimes I just colour the main bits of the doodle so like if I wanted a particular character to stand out then I use colour, give it some colour to make it really pop out. So I'd say this guy is probably my favourite character of the doodle. So I want him to stand out there. Obviously I'm going to do his tongue red, I think I'll use. And there we are. So now he stood out, what I might do, I might grab like a gold and do some characters with this colour. And I also like doing this because it gives a nice contrast to the piece as well. And as well, the same technique applies for like the shape and the expression. Um, and sometimes I like to mix it up as well. Then I, I might do one more character here. Maybe think of using a different colour so it could sort of blend in as well. And I just realised what I also like doing is adding um, letters and numbers to my drawings. And that's really fun as well. So if I was feeling stuck, I'd also use um, numbers and letters as well. And then I've also got these cool outline pens, so I might use them to sort of go around the sort of basic shape of the characters to make it look really colourful and cool. So I'm going to write creativity because that's what I include in all of my views and finish off arms like that and there's some colour. So that's what I thought of today and that's sort of how I create doodles. Can you show us how we could give our doodles personalities? So this one, I think I'm going to do him like shot. So I'd probably have him standing still. Because he's in shock. So you've really got to think about the movement and how the character would move or if he wouldn't in that sort of emotion. So yeah, so slice, I, his eyebrows would be tilted and then curve them in it. Cool. And his eyes would be the same, but his mouth would be open wide if he's shocked. Him up with his teeth and his tongue. And like when Scoop, who's a triple scoop ice cream, who's also from Games Games, 
like if I was doing her like worry like the more worried she gets she starts to drip with like ice cream so I'd sort of um, incorporate that as well and then now for the arms and legs I'm probably having like this and put his hands on his head and his legs would just be still so that's slice shocked now I'm gonna do slice happy so I do eyebrows a little bit tilted, but not so he looks scared or something. And eyes that, and then just give him a nice smile. Um, and he'd probably be crossing his arms and His legs normal and then add his cheese drips. So that is slice happy. And then finally, I'm going to do slice in a, me a sort of a moving um, motion. And he's going to be running and like what I think about is, well, first of all, what would he be running from? So it obviously be something scary. So his mouth is going to be circular, but he won't look back. And then eyebrows tilted. And then he have his arms like that, that as if he was running and then I do the first leg bent and then the other one coming back as if he's doing the pace and then I do some movement lines and cheese drips so that is slice running so the first character um a motion of slice that i did was shot so i thought if i would i'd sort of think of what i would be like if i was shot so he i'd be like standing still i'd have my hands on my head i'd be a bit exaggerated um, so that's what I sort of put into the first one and like his mouth's wide open and he looks a bit worried. Um, and then the second picture of Slice Happy is just sort of Slice's everyday um, look really. He, in the book, he's in the book series even, he's uh, very happy and he just likes strolling around and giving compliments. So that's sort of what I put into the second picture and he's got his arms crossed and everything so he's quite confident but the opposite really the third one he's running so I added um, a lot of movement lines to show how quick he is and how desperate he is and also he's like panting because of the um, lines coming out of his mouth and obviously his movement is a bit like he's, ru it's like he's running which I uh, wanted to um, betray in his um, emotion and his look. So yeah, that's what um, I thought of today. And that's sort of how I create doodles. Thank you, Joe the Doodle Boy, for sharing your inspirational ideas. And thank you to all the kids in schools and homes across the country for joining us today. 
educators and parents. We hope you and your kids enjoyed today's session. Be sure to check out more exciting Creativity Week ideas at Crayola.com slash Creativity Week. And please share your kids' artwork so others can see their doodles.